So, uh, a lot of schools, especially physics departments, have all sorts of kit in cupboards uh, that over the years, the, um, the knowledge of what it is and how it's used sometimes gets lost as people move on, people retire. Um, and it's a real shame when you've got kit that can be really useful, but just for a lack of knowledge of how to use it, uh, it's not getting used. Um, you might see these around, there are, there are variations on them. This is called a Maltese cross tube um, for fairly obvious reasons. And um, it's one of the many types of electron beam tube uh, that have that physics teachers have used over the years. Um, what you have at the back of all of these tubes is, uh, you can't really see it, uh, you'll see it when it switches on in a minute, um, is effectively a six volt light bulb filament, uh, but with no bulb. Um, and that gets hot, uh, this tube is evacuated, uh, so as the tube gets hot, uh, as the filament gets hot, you get thermoionic emission, the, in GCSE terms the particles vibrate really fast, that knocks off a load of electrons. You then have a cylindrical electrode, which is connected to the positive side of a high voltage power supply. That then accelerates the electrons up to a high speed. They then go through the tube where various things are put in their way, depending on which sort of tube it is. Uh, here we've got a metal uh, Maltese cross shape, which is connected to the positive side of the power supply. And then on the uh, screen, because of course, once the electrons hit the glass, if it was normal glass, nothing would happen. So a phosphor is put on that so that when the electrons hit it at high energy, that energy, some of that energy gets converted into light. In this case, it's green, it's green phosphor. Um, so, uh, the first thing to do, once you've all wired it up, uh, different ones of these might need different wiring. Um, so, uh, if you've got instructions with it, simply follow those instructions. If not, there are uh, people have put scans of various types online. Yeah, I, I say that um, don't just use this video to wire up your Maltese cross because we're not responsible if you blow something Absolutely. or you electrocute yourself. But it, this Absolutely. is an EHT, so um, it goes up to a pretty high potential difference? Uh, yeah, like thousands of volts. this can go up to 5,000 volts, um, but we've connected it through, uh, we've connected it in such a way that um, we know that this is going to be safe for us, but as Lewis says, um, you, you, you're responsible for your own wiring. Yeah, but, but in terms of the potential difference, I mean, it's probably less than you might have on a Van de Graaff generator, perhaps. Probably, so, yeah, yeah. And people are fairly happy to use those. So, um, yeah, and are you using and, shrouded and, leads? And I'm also using shrouded connections. So those are, um, uh, if you've got any of these, these are normal, look like normal four millimeters, but, um, four millimeter plugs, but they've got retractable uh, plastic shroud. So you yeah. can't half plug it in and have a live connection available that you can uh, you okay. can touch. And that's really important yeah. to make sure you use those. So we'll imagine it's all safe. I mean, we'll imagine it's all, all safe. All set, once you've got it, it set up correctly to your happiness and safely, then these are the things that you can do with this. Yeah. So um, I would first of all have the power supply turned right down switch it on and just tell people it's worth telling pupils because uh, it does even you can even tell that it's a light bulb filament because it looks like what you get from a light bulb filament so we've just and predictably got... you get a, a light shadow of the cross on the screen so this is nothing to do expect. with electrons traveling along nope. it's purely there's a shadow just due to the light so at the moment there is thermionic emission going on electrons are yeah. being given off from that but they're just going in every which way uh, okay. they're not being encouraged in any particular way because I haven't turned up the PD for the um, electrode the accelerating electrode yet. yeah so if I do that and accelerate it up to um, or uh, turn it up to about two kilovolts. Oh, get that lovely quite green nicely. Blue. Now you get a shadow, but this is now not a shadow of light, this is a shadow of electrons. So electrons are hitting the screen, and as I said earlier, the energy is being converted into green light. Um, so what's happening here is the electrons are being given off at the back, they're being accelerated by the positive electrode, they then shoot through the tube anywhere they hit the, uh, sorry, they're also being accelerated because I've got the, currently I've got the Maltese cross connected to the positive side of the power supply as well. So they're being at attracted towards the cross, where they hit the cross, uh, they're just um, going back to the positive side of the power supply. Where they don't hit the cross, they're just shooting past and then hitting the screen. So you get a nice uh, shadow. And I think this screen. is really nice and visual for the class to see, but there's a lot of good physics we can do, isn't there? Absolutely. Um, and another thing that people sometimes, and even some teachers get confused about is, hang on a minute, once the electrons have gone, been accelerated from the filament to the uh, electrode and to the cross, why when they pass it, don't they get attracted back if that's positively charged? Yeah. And the answer, which is not often in the instruction booklets, right anything like that but you get a bit of a sense of it if I touch the glass you can see that the glass is actually um, not a total perfect insulator and actually the glass is um, also earthed it is effectively earthed itself in, the, okay. in this particular setup so that's why they don't get attracted back the glass is kind of like a negative attracting them. So at this point, uh, yeah, there's a few things you can do. Um, first of all, you can just really simply turn up the accelerating PD and that doesn't change anything about the shape on the screen but if I go up to three kilovolts, it becomes noticeably brighter. And that's really simply just because uh, the same amount of electrons are being accelerated 
uh, they're being accelerated more, they're gaining more kinetic energy, so when they hit the phosphor, they dump more of that into light energy, so therefore it becomes brighter, yeah, so that's nice and straightforward. Right. Yep. Um, so turn it back down to two kilovolts. The other thing you can do is now bring in a um, bring in a magnet. Uh, it doesn't have to be a nice neodymium one like this. A, a bar magnet will will do. Um, that's quite nice. You've got, so that's north face there that you've got. So this is the north face. So the field lines are coming out of this face. Yeah. Um, and if you bring it into the, from the side, then you can see uh, the pattern on the screen all gets um, squished up towards the top, and that's simply a Fleming's left hand rule. Uh, situation. So we've got uh, first finger field, we've got a north pole coming in that way, so the field lines are going that way, so first finger in that direction. Yep. We've got electrons moving that way, but of course uh, your second finger in Fleming's left hand rule is conventional current, which assumes a positive charge carrier. Yep. These are negative charge carriers, so it all gets reversed. So ele an electron beam going that way is a conventional current going in the opposite direction, just to confuse mm -hmm. things ever so slightly. And then you end up with your thumb pointing upwards for motion. So if I bring in the north pole that way, it moves upwards. Fleming's left hand rule. Nice and if I bring in the South Pole, it goes downwards and so on. And I think it just very nicely shows there's this interaction between charged particles and that magnetic field. Absolutely, which is can be really quite subtle. Um, so at that point, that's fine. Um, that's all nice. A, re a nicer thing you can do that isn't often uh, known about is that you can, uh, remember I said earlier that the uh, Maltese cross was connected to the positive um, as well. If I disconnect it, so I still, uh, I still keep the filament on, I still accelerate the electrons, uh, I just disconnect the cross from the positive side of the power supply so it's just going to be isolated. Uh, I'm going to disconnect it here just for convenience. Yeah, because sometimes the tubes can be a bit fragile and you don't want to be pulling wires out the, necessarily. The, the, the tubes it? are often quite lightly mounted, um, yeah. so if you start trying to pull that off you can sometimes uh, jerk things. And you don't want to be the one who breaks it, do you? You really don't. Um, so if, you, if I pull that out from here, you watch the pattern on the screen, three, two, one, that happens, wow. which is really quite odd um, if, you've, if you've never seen it before. By the way, you still can see that the light shadow is still there, so oh, you've yeah. got a reference for where it was, but it's now gone from being a Maltese cross to being more of a clover leaf. Yeah, a lucky clover. And if I uh, increase the voltage now, the clover leaf gets bigger. So, so why is that then? <laughs> so this is where, this, uh, and if I turn it right down, it just goes back to being the same as the light shadow. So the reason you get the clover leaf is that as I disconnect the, the Maltese cross from the power supply, remember it was positively charged, it was connected to the positive side of the supply. Once I disconnect it, the electrons are hitting it and they've now got nowhere to go. So they just build up a charge on there, almost like a balloon being rubbed on a jumper. They yeah. build up a charge that's got nowhere to go. Um, and if it's got nowhere to go, you've now got a beam of negative electrons with a negatively charged Maltese cross. Yeah. So the cross is repelling the electrons as it gets close to them. So before, where the electrons were able to go nice and smoothly around the Maltese cross, uh, the electrons that go close to the edges of the cross are being deflected away from it. And so, of course, the cross is then... Uh, or the, the shape on the screen is then being expanded in size and the electrons are being repelled from it. And that's where you don't get that nice neat corner that you had originally, it's just this kind of rounded shape at the edges. Yes, yeah. yes exactly, it's rounded because of the just general deflection around yeah. it in all, in all directions. Um, which is really nice and, and that sort of disconnection uh, trick isn't always um, terribly well known about. Um, I don't necessarily propose to uh, to explain this, but just an extra thing you can do, just to make things really kind of mind bending, and it's very very pretty, is instead of bringing in the magnet, going back to the magnet, instead of bringing it in from the side and getting the Fleming's left hand rule deflection that we had before, if we bring it in from the front, quite carefully along the axis uh, main axis of the tube, the cross rotates in shape, and particularly with the neodymium magnet, it goes round, oh. and then eventually you start to get some extremely peculiar shapes, just depending on how close it is. That is lovely, isn't it? And uh, yes, I, I, as I say, I'm not going to try and provide an explanation of that, but as a nice little pretty thing to finish off with, it's really lovely.